backfire at all. Yeah, no, it, it was fine. Turns out that, yeah, it you does You throw something fire. that is blistering hot next to it, and the thing goes up like a piece of paper. Something that's like, say, 1,000 degrees centigrade. Uh-huh. Could, yeah. yeah. In fairness, most things will catch fire at 1,000 degrees centigrade. That's true. It's, 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 which it's, is why it's, it's hard a very, to find stuff. It is though. hard to find, and that's why they had to find stuff that yeah. wasn't. Yeah. And unfortunately, for you know, a decade or two, they were packing airplanes with this stuff, thinking that it was resistant to fires. When in fact it wasn't. Well, it's it was resistant to most normal fires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It if, was, if, it was, as Joe said, some idiot flicked his cigarette yeah. into the corner and it caught the carpet on fire, mm-hmm. the insulation probably wouldn't have burned. Yeah. yeah. And in fairness, you got it was much, much better than the stuff that was made out of ammonium percolate that it replaced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that never yeah. was a thing. No, I'm just joking. Um, yeah. But, but uh, okay. What back, are we talking about? Back to here. Uh, do you remember PR? The, the pallet that is in question yeah, right that was where the flame was yeah. supposedly have the taken PR place. Pallet, yeah. Yes. Well, according to the work that Mark Young has done, he has figured out that there was a main wiring path that ran above PR, and that wiring path used this wire that uh, the capped on wiring, mm-hmm. and it was also underneath or uh, directly on top of insulation. Mm. So mm-hmm. if wet arcing took place, it would have caught that insulation on fire. That insulation would have eventually burned enough to fall on top of the pallet, mm. which would have kept the fire above the deck of the plane, which would explain, you know, it's that super hot, that slag is going to happen and that super high temperature, and then the fire is going to continue to burn upwards right there. It really kind of nicely bundles up yeah, it does. a bunch of the evidence we have for where and what the fire did. Yeah, particularly yeah, that, well, if it started burning down a little bit, if it's starting to burn into those plastics, the fumes that are coming off of that, you know, the... It's going to be a little stanky. Thrown, you've ever thrown plastic into, like, a campfire or whatever? Sadly, it, yes. Yeah, and it gets, like, really, really smoky and, like, you start it's, coughing it's really, really accurate. bad. You don't want to be inhaling you that don't. stuff. So, no. you know, if that's starting to burn, like, a little bit, it's going to really complicate things a lot. No, so, can, yeah, that's a good... It'll put some toxic fumes into the, uh, into the, the rest of the plane. The other thing but that... It, it the thing, but no, one thing I wanted to mention, too, oh yeah. is if you look at, if you look at his, his website that has the, uh, the, his arguments on it, he has, he has drawings of exactly where that wiring course was. And yeah. And it precisely corresponds to the place where all it the heat does. damage took place. It yeah. does. And th- no, nobody has officially reinvestigated it, but he makes a really good argument. His argument also does explain something else, which is uh, on the voice data recorder, they talk about, the crew talks about to the tower, the fact that they're having problems with their electronics. Mm, yeah. Well, if their main wiring path is on fire, that's going to knock a few that's things gonna out. That's going to screw mm-hmm. up the electronics. Absolutely. So it totally, totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were uh, they were like circuit breakers were, were popping. Uh huh. Yeah, then that sound got picked up on the com- the cockpit voice recording. It thing. did. And I can just see that as, as wires melted together and, you know, you got shorts and You're going to make arcs and shorts and things are and just... Things, yeah, circuit breakers are going to do what they're supposed off. to. Yeah. yeah. They're going to start snapping and yeah. you can't turn them back on. It's not like your house where you, fl- you blow a fuse and you just go turn it back on. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work like that on no. the plane because yeah. the wire is gone. Yeah. Completely gone. It makes me wonder if um, I, whether they would have even been able to land the plane even if... The, the crew had survived and the plane had remained, in, remained intact. Yeah, would they have been able to get the landing gear down for instance? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, that's a that's a really good question because there is, uh, Joe, you may remember the exact wording for this, but I can't, is that planes would, there used to be fly-by-wire where all the controls were done by wire, uh-huh. and then, you know, like the, the throttle. Yeah, cables, and internal cables, cables and stuff. And then I can't remember what it is when it's done by electronics, but those big planes are not fly by wire. They are totally done by electrical signals turning mm. everything on and off. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure. So I think that they, they may not have been, the best they probably could have done was actually belly down on the runway if they'd been able to come in. Well, I mean, I don't know. Belly I'm not down sure. is better than like torpedoed into the water. Though. Yeah, that's Absolutely. true. I mean, <laughs> but no, I'm yeah. saying to ask your question, could they have even got the landing gear down? Probably not. That's, I don't think uh, they could have. You know, if you're actually, if you work for an airline and you're on some long haul thing and you're listening to us through your earbuds while you're tootling along over the Pacific, then give us a call. <laughs> I, my, I, email, I, or send us an email, but I, I'm thinking that there has to be some sort some of backup. manual hydraulic 
backup right? for lowering the landing gear I'm and, sure and operating is. the controls. There has to be. Uh, you know, it would I, be insane to do anything else. As I mean, again, well, this always happens to us. We've all thought about this, but none of us took the time to look because well, oh, it was a last minute thought. I in didn't this occur. Yeah, it didn't occur to me until just now. Yeah, that's I what mean, I'm saying. Uh, like I, in the back of my head, I kind of knew. Yeah. I needed and this to, is yeah. too much googling for me to do on the fly. No, yeah, it's be... not like looking up like what's a galleon. Oh, it's Harry Potter thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll call Boeing tomorrow and find out. All right, I, great. You know what? I believe you will. Yeah. Let's move to the, our last theory. All right. Because believe it or not, we're you know way into this, and we still got one more theory oh, left. Oh, God. Yeah. I, I thought you said this was going to be a short one. Oh, no, no. You saw the script. Right. I've been writing bigger and bigger scripts. I'm working on a book. I know. It's you gonna are. Take, yeah, really. Yeah, we might actually come out with a Thinking Sideways book. What yeah. Do you think? Uh, no, because we'll get sued because it's full of copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why would you admit that? No. <laughs> Wikipedia is going to sue us. No. Uh, no. Uh, nah. Let's move on, though, to our next one, which uh, our next theory is based on chemical oxygen generators. And we've talked about this a little bit in the very beginning. Uh, we threw it around, though. We didn't explain what was going on. So let me explain what we're talking about here. You've been on a plane. You've seen the steward or stewardess explain how the oxygen masks drop, and then you're supposed to put your own mask on before you assist the elderly or children. Well, I foolishly for a long, long time just presumed that there was some giant canister of air on the plane that mm. piped into those little rubber tubes. Yeah, not quite true, huh? Absolutely not true, because it turns out a giant tank of air is stupidly heavy. Oh, yeah. And you just can't be packing that around. That that costs way too much fuel to lift up and down all the time when a plane flies. Weird. So instead what they do is they generate oxygen in a chemical fashion. Uh, and there's a chemical way to store it. And there's a bunch of – evidently, I had to read the science 800 times, and I'm still not 100% positive how this works. But there's potassium chlorate and sodium chlorate are rich in oxygen. And when put under the right um, – circumstances or pressure situations, they will give up oxygen much like a uh, sponge wood that was full of water if you squeeze it. They, they just give off oxygen, which is pure, which is great when you want to pump it out to people because it is in a small pellet or cylinder form. So it's something that's very small and very light, and it just takes either a chemical reaction or a friction reaction to make this stuff activate. It doesn't actually burn so much. It's more of a decomposition degradation of the material, but that's what puts out all the oxygen. But that process does generate a bunch of heat. Mm. Yeah, it's like... Well, I'm just trusting you on that. Yeah, it's like... Know. Well, actually, even burning, uh, that's, that's basically... If you burn a piece of wood, that's oxidation. Yeah, it's and that's... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what it is. You're breaking this material down, and one of its main byproducts turns out to be O2. And the other byproduct is lots of heat. Lots of heat. Yeah. So the O2 will go into your little mask, and it's super lightweight, and it's easy to transport, and you get to breathe if your oxygen mask comes down. Me? Yes, you. Okay. Or Joe. No, just me. Just you. Yeah. Okay, not Joe. You can't I put on your mask. It. Yeah, no. sorry. Joe didn't put on his mask because no. we've heard him talking. Yeah. Me either because oh. I keep yabbering on. <laughs> um, but it's just me surviving now. <laughs> Devin's the only one who's so going to survive. It's like Devin's going solo. <laughs> Um, but th the point is, they're very light, but they do generate a bunch of heat. The problem with them is that they can, and they have in the past, ignited things that were near them. They generate that much heat in mm -hmm. their, their degradation process. Uh, we, there's a, there's a, what is it? It's uh, Value Jet Flight 592. This was in 1996. It crashed 10 minutes after takeoff, and what they figured out was that there were chemical oxygen generators that were in were loaded on the plane. Well, they were they were loaded in the cargo hold though, and right? improperly stowed. Yeah, and they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm. Uh -huh. And so they went off, and they generated a boatload of heat, which caused the plane to catch on fire and go down almost immediately. Yeah, as whereas uh, on our on our seven forty seven, they would have all been stowed in the correct places. Mm -hmm. It's not like they were haul they weren't hauling a cargo of these things. 
But if this plane is meant to potentially have passengers in the area where the cargo is, mm -hmm. that means there had to have been some kind of oxygen delivery system back there. It would yeah. have been, you know, in the ceiling cavity somewhere because that's where the chemical oxygen generator, I presume, would have been stored. I may be wrong on that, but all I can think what this theory is going for is that either the oxygen generator was ignited improperly through, you know, friction can ignite them. That is one of the methods that's used to ignite them. Friction could have set it off, which created all that heat. And oh, by the way, it's spewing oxygen out onto the fire it's created, which would make it burn super hot. Mm. Or the oxygen generator went off if it's not in that ceiling area. Again, I don't know where they are on a 747, but the oxygen would have been in that overhead compartment because that's where it has to drop out of which means that there would have been a massive amount of pure O2 next to what anything that could have caught on fire that then would subsequently burn mm. obscenely fast and hot. I, I'm not, I, I've seen pictures of the insides of these holes, and I haven't seen anything that even resembles an oxygen-breathing apparatus in there. See, that was uh, the thing, is that I know that the, you know, when you look at your plane, you know, there's the, the overhead... Um, what is the overhead thing where you put Bins. your bags? Yeah. yeah, you know where the guy with the giant wheelie bags. Yeah, exactly. Beats his his huge bag that should have never been in the the. You can tell we've all traveled by air recently. Oh yeah. yes, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. I have watched but that it, Jack mm -hmm. beat on you know and then try and yeah, slam the, the door. The overhead okay. bin. So those overhead bins wouldn't be there. No, they're not. But the if the overhead bins were to be returned.